Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Melodic Muse. This is Andy Timmons. My next two sessions of this column is going to revolve around the solo of my song Welcome Home from the Andy Timmons band record called Theme from a Perfect World. It's basically a repetitive three chord sequence, um, but it's got a lot of, lot of detail to it. So I'm looking forward to getting into this with you. So with any piece that you're working on the solo for, it's really, really important to know the harmony. Um, this particular chord progression starts off on kind of an E major kind of sound. It's an implied third. And the second chord is a C major. I think it might even be a C major seven. And the second chord is an A dominant. Though each, each time, I think there's a rhythm guitar underneath it that's just kind of playing these kind of open fifth voicings. So it turns out, me as the, as the soloist, I'm kind of dictating what that harmony is. But in the notes that I play, you'll see that I, what, I'm, what I'm hearing in my head, even though the backing isn't actually giving that to me, you're gonna hear a major third with a flat seven on the E chord, making a dominant seven. Then when it goes to the C major seven, you're going to G, G natural instead of G sharp. And then there's the A. You're going to hear the note C sharp featured a lot. So that's going to be the, the third, the, you know, the major third of that chord with the dominant seven. So it's kind of pretty much like an, even though these chords aren't happening, it's what's implied in my harmony. E7, C major seven, A7, okay? So... Those three chords, they all line up quite nicely to an E minor pentatonic. So you literally could play. You could, you could stick to just, I'm gonna turn my echo down a little bit. You could stick to just the E minor pentatonic and, and sound fine and actually make a lot of great music. But the kind of soloing and melodies that really interest me are the ones that really go after the harmony that's happening at each given point, right? So instead of playing E minor pentatonic over the first chord, I'm playing more of a mixolydian thing. And then when it switches to the C major seven, there it goes to straight E minor. Aeolian. Then when it goes to A7, it's like E Dorian. Though I'll honestly point out that I'm not really thinking so much of those scales when I'm playing the solo. I'm thinking about what notes are going to be chord tones alluding to that harmony and which notes are not chord tones, therefore um, notes that want to go somewhere. Okay, so let's look at the specific solo. So the first statement of the solo is, is coming out of a... And then it's laying on a big old open E5 power chord. So this is open E, fretted E root, I mean fifth, root, open B and E. And I have my guitar wired, and this was literally specifically done only for this purpose, where I never use the middle tone knob when I have a humbucker single single, so it's that's actually a second volume knob that turns off the volume to my neck pickup, so I can do the classic Les Paul. Which I learned from Ace Freely, and I'm sure people did it before. In fact, I know people did it before that, because I can think of it on a, a Pete Townsend Who track. Um, several Who tracks. So anyway, that happened in the 60s. I got it from Cold Jim from Ace Freely. So. so by flicking the switch, I go to dead and then live from, you know, this pickup is off, that one's on. And I'm doing it in a very specific rhythm. You know, you can kind of do it random. Oops. But I'm just doing it in, in, over the bar line triplet feel. Uh, let's see how we do one, two, three, yeah. 
I can't count and do it at the same time. You'll get the ideas in the transcription, but it's like a, a long three over the four. It's got a cool feel to it. So that's happening over the first two changes. <laughs> Then I'm just down in open position, E minor pentatonic. So I'm going from the C major 7. Bending up from that F sharp to the G, and that's, this, that's that flat 7th. And then I, I, I bend further up. I... Without rearticulating with the right hand. So this is going to get me from the by by bending up to that A at the very last second there from the G sharp, then I can release that, and that's going to give you that that major third of the E chord. And that that again, that's the shift in harmony that I love to hear because we've been. It goes back, right? So there's at each point, each chord gives you the opportunity to really outline what changed from the previous chord and then lead into the next chord. And so it's like this nice cyclical thing. So, and that's all without any, any re-articulation with the right hand. And I'm and on the record, I was probably in the room with the amp, so there was a nice feedback that kind of helped me with the sustain of it, but. So there we go. So now we're into the next E7 chord. So then I'm just root, I mean, I'm fifth, flat seven. And there, you know, I'm pretty much, after this, you don't hear much of the third again. Oh, so there, they can sh there's the shift from that fifth, the fifth of that C major seven. You come from... These are all the moments where, you know, my ear over, over time, you know, from players like Pat Metheny that were brilliant to this, and so many jazz players, Larry Carlton, uh, really could voice lead through the changes, and they know what note is going to give you the, the most emotion, is going to be most evocative for that chord change, and that's a wonderful teaching point there. And then... The next chord, I don't address that third, but uh, but here, that's one of my favorite phrases because I go from the. It's a very common, you know. You hear that sound a lot, but the way I'm doing it is, you know, fretting that E on the B string, then letting the the index finger kind of guide you through the next few notes. But there's a, there's a nice leap there. And by doing that, by taking my time, instead of playing, I could have I gone. Same exact melodic content, but so, listen to the difference in what you can milk out of the phrase. Every now and then that top note will just have a bit of a swell to it. So, you know, this was too down pick too. Really emphatic. Okay, so from that E7. So there's a nice shift there. Because if that, that note C for that C major would definitely be out of key for the C sharp would be most indicative or most common on that E, e, e mixolydian kind of sound. All right, so. Uh, and also, I'm getting a lot of um, help also when I sometimes will utilize an open string to further uh, solidify the harmony. And, and so when you're on that C major seven, that high E string is the third, right? So C, E, G. So I can I can have the open E on on just any any of these notes on the B string. 
So from here... And there I, I'm, I'm primarily dwelling on the E minor pentatonic. It seems like, for whatever reason, melodically, when I got to the A chord that those next couple of times, I didn't, I didn't really have to play the C sharp. I'm getting enough of the information of the E minor pentatonic. So as we climb up, that's the beginning of the second half of the solo as we wrap it up on that D. And we'll get to that in the next issue.